How does text-to-image generation work? You've definitely heard about diffusion models such as Stable Diffusion, DALI2 or ImageGen. Most public diffusion model code bases have enormous amounts of code and I guess we can generally agree that diffusion models are quite hard to understand in general. Today I want to introduce you to Paya, which takes the task of text-to-image modeling a bit less complicated. For up, I want to mention that Paya is mine and this guy's work, Pablo. This makes me even more excited to show you this method, because that's what we've been working on for so long now. But I also want to emphasize that I'm definitely biased towards speaking good about Paya. So keep that in mind and make up your own opinion. So to get started, there are three prerequisites that you should have. And luckily and coincidentally, I made a video about all three. You should know what a VQGAN is and how it works. That is the first video on my channel. Secondly, a basic understanding of diffusion models. Even though Paya is quite different, the core idea of noising images and denoising is the same. So it would be really nice if you would already know that. And cross attention, the third video topic on my channel, which is how we condition Paya with text information. If you need a refresher of these, I will do a quick recap here, but also feel free to watch the videos on my channel. So text to image. The goal is to give any text to our model and let it generate pictures that make sense with the given caption. We don't want to get a photo of a car when asking for a painting of a mountain. So our image generation process is conditioned on text. During training, we need to teach our model this connection between text and images. For that, we need data. And the data must contain images with captions, like this. So let's assume we have a huge data set of images with text. How does Paya work? Paya uses a VQGAN to encode images into a smaller latent space. For example, if we have images of size 256 by 256 and we use a VQGAN that has a compression factor of 4, the compressed version will have a resolution of 64 by 64. The main reason we are doing this is because it saves a lot of computational power. If you want to know how VQGANs work in detail, you can check out this video. But the most essential thing is that the VQGAN encoder returns us tokens that are contained in a codebook. There's only a finite number of possible tokens. In the case of Paella, we usually choose about 8000. What we do during training is the following. For every image that we have in our dataset, we first encode it with the VQGAN to get the tokens. Then we noise a random number of tokens by replacing them with other random tokens from the codebook. Take a look at this very simple example. Say your latent image has a shape of 4x4 tokens after the VQGAN encoding and that our codebook has a size of 10. We first randomly draw a number for how many tokens we want to noise, a ratio between 0 and 100% or time step as we call it. Say this ratio is 50%. We'll now take 50% of our tokens and replace them by some other tokens from our codebook. For example, look at this token 6 here. We'll switch it out for another random token, say the token 4, and we do that for 50% of the tokens. So now we have our original tokens and the noise tokens. We still have to take care of the captions and find a way to provide that as conditional input to our model. And we do that by using a pre-trained language model to encode the text and inject it into our model via cross-attention. You can check out the full video on cross-attention here, but in short, it just uses the attention mechanism to enable every token in our image to attend to every word in our caption and to decide which word is important to it and take information from. Right now, it seems to be the most powerful technique to do text conditioning. So now we have the noise tokens and the caption embeddings ready to feed into our model and ask it to predict the original version of the tokens. Alongside, we'll also give our model the ratio of how many tokens are noised in the current image, such that it can get an idea of how much it has to denoise. For example, when a lot of the image is noised, it has to be more creative, whereas when it sees that only a fraction of the image is noised, it can focus on detecting small perturbations. The model outputs a distribution over all possible tokens. This might sound a bit complicated, but let me explain with the example we did earlier. We have the 4x4 original and noise tokens. The noise tokens go into the model and the model outputs a score for all possible tokens in the codebook for every position. In PyTorch this looks like the following. The input has a shape of 4x4 and the output has a shape of 4x4 times 10. You see, every position has 10 values now, which stands for a score for each of the 10 codebook vectors. 
It is the same as in classification task, where for example you want to classify ImageNet and let your model output a 1000 dimensional vector, where each entry stands for a score corresponding to one of the 1000 ImageNet classes. It's basically the same logic here. Let the model predict a score for all possible tokens at each position. And in that you can see for which tokens the model is the most certain and which ones are not going to be so likely to be at a certain position. Generally you can think of it as the model having two tasks. First it needs to determine by itself which tokens are noise and secondly predict what tokens from the codebook to use in place of the noise. And now we want to compare the prediction for the original tokens to the actual original tokens. And you might have already guessed it, we use cross entropy as a loss function. This loss will be back propagated and the model will be updated with Adam W as the optimizer. And that's literally all there is for the training. During the big training we used the batch test of 2048, so more than 2000 images and captions will be taken at each step, we encode all images with the VQ again, then we randomly select a different ratio of how many tokens to noise for all the images. Afterwards we feed the noise tokens together with the time step and the captions into the model and let it predict the original tokens. We'll then take the cross entropy loss over all 2048 samples and voila! That is the training. We now let this model train for a long time and many many steps. And now after the model has been trained, we can try to sample new images using the model and hope that we get some good results. For the sampling we start off with the entire image being random tokens. This is equivalent to noising 100% of the tokens during training. We also think of a caption and encode it with the transformer. We now feed the noisy tokens, the embedded captions and the noise ratio, which is 100% right now, into the model and let it predict the outcome. As you know, every position in the output can be interpreted as a score distribution over all codebook tokens. We convert it to a probability distribution by applying the softmax function. The softmax function just normalizes the scores and makes sure the probabilities add up to 1. Afterwards, we sample from that distribution using multinomial sampling. If we look at the output for this result, it looks very much like a broad sketch and doesn't have any details at all. This is because during training we only noise images 100% for a rather small fraction of the time. The real power of Paella and also classic diffuse models comes from iterative renoising and denoising, where every time you renoise with less noise than before. So to do that, we take the prediction and renoise it to for example 90% instead of 100%, which makes the image look like this. We'll give the image back to Paella together with the text conditioning and the ratio, which is now 90% instead of 100. And that is the result we're getting back. This time we can already see much more structure. Let's repeat this process for a couple more times and we see that every time the results become clearer and sharper. And this is the basic logic how the sampling works. And all the sampling code can be written in PyTorch in as little as 12 lines of code. Isn't that cool? Let's check that out. This line here is for creating the initial random noise that we start with. This line is to create the time steps or ratios as we call them. They start at 1.0 or 100% and go down to 0.0, .0 or 0%. This is the loop over the number of time steps where we feed the current image into the model with the conditioning and the time step. Here we do the softmax and here we do the multinomial sampling. And last but not least, here we renoise the image with the appropriate time step for the next iteration. In the case that we just had where the ratio was 100%, we renoise back to 90%. Now you might be wondering what the other lines are doing. Let me explain. This line is for setting temperatures. You might have seen that when using language models. We divide the predictions of the model by the temperature. Let's take an example. Here I've made up a score distribution over 100 codebook vectors. Note that this example is only for a single token. So for example for this one. You can see that the model thinks that certain tokens are more likely than others by assigning a higher score to them. If the temperature is 1, this will not have any effect. If we make our temperature bigger though, this flattens the distribution and evens the very likely tokens more towards the less likely ones. The effect of this is that when we apply the softmax and do the multinomial sampling, we get rather unlikely tokens more often and thus get more diverse samples. 
On the other hand, if we make the temperature smaller, we make the distribution sharper and we only sample very very likely tokens. For Paella we found that starting off with a temperature at around 1 and then getting smaller gives the best results, which also makes sense if you think about it. Now what is this? What is CFG? CFG stands for Classifier Free Guidance and is a trick that makes text to image models perform so much better. Try sampling stable diffusion with no CFG and the outputs will be so much worse and the same for Paella. I already explained CFG briefly in the diffusion model video, so let's take a look at that. So how does classifier free guidance work? During training for like 10% of the time, we'll train unconditionally. That way the model learns to do both, conditional and unconditional sampling. And during sampling, we'll sample also both ways, but linearly interpolate away from the unconditional sample towards the conditional one. And we'll do that in every iteration. I'll put the paper for CFG in the description, so you can read it more carefully if you're interested. And this line that you see here is doing exactly that what you just saw in theory. And with these two lines, we renoise the images back with the original noise instead of a new noise. We found this to work better. And that's the entire sampling procedure. The last thing we do is that we feed the latent tokens into the decoder of the VQGAN to get the real image at pixel level. And with that, we can sample these beautiful images. And I think it's pretty cool that with such a simple setup regarding training and sampling, you can get really aesthetic images. I believe it really gives a nice and gentle introduction into the field of generative AI, where you can even understand it with little to no math background. Let's move on and talk about what models we use to condition Paya. I already mentioned that we condition the model on text, but which models do we use for that? And to be clear, we are not only using one model for conditioning. We condition Paella on ByteT5, Clip Text Embeddings and Clip Image Embeddings. ByteT5 is a transformer and so is the Clip Text Encoder. But we also get the Clip Image Embeddings from the training images. But we only condition the model on the Clip Text and Image Embeddings 5% of the time, as the model otherwise ignores the ByteT5 Embeddings. And as mentioned before, we use cross attention to inject the conditional information to Paella. And since we have three different conditionings that all have different dimensions, we project them all to the same dimension, concatenate them and feed them to a model. And now you might be asking where we get the image embeddings from during sampling, if we just start off with a text caption. It is basically the same that Dali 2 is doing. Pablo trained a prior that takes in clip text embeddings and predicts image embeddings. You can read the DALI 2 paper if you want to know more about this or just look at our code on GitHub. One thing that I want to emphasize is that you probably don't need so many conditioning models. Loading all of these models takes up a lot of GPU memory. You could probably also just train your paella using clip text embeddings as done in stable diffusion. We just went really experimental and wanted to see what happens. One good thing that Paella can do now though is that you can actually condition your generation on an image too. For example, look at these examples. In the first one you can see my dog, combined with the starry night painting. The second one combines a text with the image. And the last row is just feeding in the image, which generates variations of the original image. So that definitely is a cool property with a lot of potential, I guess. One more thing that I quickly want to talk about is the architecture we use. And again, a big, big shout out to Pablo who did an extensive architecture search, combining many things from recent papers and bringing in his own knowledge and ideas. Our model is a unit. Units are really popular as they save us a lot of compute by progressively getting smaller around the bottleneck. That's why we also decided to use it. We used three levels for both downsampling and upsampling. So our 64x64 64 64 latents go down to 32x32, 32 32, then 16x16 16 16, and then 8x8, 8 8, and then up again to 16, 32 and 64. And obviously we have to skip connections between the downsampling and upsampling blocks. Blocks at the 32x32 32 32 size only consist of ResNet blocks and time step embedding blocks. And the blocks at 16x16 16 16 and 8x8 8 8 consist of ResNet, time step and attention blocks. We decided to include attention only at these layers because it's less computationally expensive since the sequence length is not as long as at 32x32. 32 32. One last thing I want to quickly talk about is a bit of the story behind Paella because we're not working at some big AI lab and did this as a project in our job. One year ago there was this paper called Mask It. 
Initially there was no code released, but I was really intrigued by the paper since I was working a lot with VQGANs at that time. So I sat down and started an open source implementation on GitHub. The code didn't really work and other people were facing the same problems. In the repository issues, I was talking to a few people and we are sharing our current progress. At some point I asked if we want to move the conversation to Discord and send my username. But nobody messaged me on Discord for an entire month. And then out of nowhere this guy Pablo starts messaging me and we talk and he shows me his code and ideas and how he extends and simplifies Maskit. And I realize how bad my code is. And then things took its way. We both started working on his code base. At some point we are even able to use the stability GPU cluster to train our first Paya model. The initial models were all not really good compared to state of the art and our latest model. But we kept working and working. At some point I even told my professor about Paella and he suggested making it into a paper. Fast forward a few months, we wrote the paper, submitted it to CVPR and got rejected. But nevertheless it was a cool experience and a good introduction into academia and how annoyed you can get at reviewers. After that we still didn't give up and knew Paella had so much potential and kept working. We improved a bunch of things regarding architecture, training, sampling and so on and ended up with the final model I introduced you to here. But Paella is definitely not perfect and still lacks a couple things. The generations are only at 256 by 256. It cannot depict text and images. It's not good with famous people and it requires a lot of RAM and many many more. But we are so happy that we have come to this point already, no matter what. And there's so much more to do. We want to test Paella on small datasets, different conditionings, try it on text to video and other modalities. And not only that, we also have ideas of combining it with other methods, which could be pretty cool if it works. By the way, one thing, Paella is called Paella because on our initial trainings the model always started to become good on making images of food first, before everything else. And since Pablo is from Spain, we decided to name it after a Spanish dish. Right now it's only Pablo and me working on this. If you're interested or have other cool ideas you would love to try out or talk about, I've created a Discord. Feel free to join and hang out a bit. I truly believe that working with more people on these problems in an open manner will lead to much more progress as also seen with Open Assistant or any other Lion project. The next big thing we want to work on is text to video. If that sounds interesting to you, feel free to join. I put a link to the Discord in the description. So yeah, that is Paella. Let's make a quick summary so you can take out the most essential things Paella is about. During training we encode images with a VQGAN and work at a compressed latent space of tokens. We noise the latent space images by randomly swapping a certain percentage of tokens with other random tokens. Then we compare the predicted tokens with the original tokens by taking the cross entropy loss. And sampling is also super easy. We start off with all tokens being random noise. We feed the tokens along with the text conditioning and the time step into the model and let it predict the original tokens. We see that this doesn't give good results so we re-noise up to some level and sample again. And again and again and again. Until we have a clear looking image. And that's it. That's Paella. I really hope you enjoyed the video and maybe even liked the method. But I would be happy to hear any kind of criticism, comments or thoughts that you have. And if you like the content, feel free to subscribe and share it with your friends. And with that being said, I wish you a nice day.